Hey there, Sam. Let's learn the Builder Typing Game with JavaScript. So what do we have here? When I click on Start Game, there's a ticking timer, and I'll need to type in the words showing up on the screen. If I type in something right, the word will show up with a green background. If I type in something wrong, it'll be a red background. And the game will keep track of your word per minute counter and also your score. When the game ends, it will alert you your final WPM. And if we click on OK, we'll go back to the initial start screen. There is a lot of things going on here. Don't worry, we'll go through it one by one. Let's dive into the code. All right, first of all, let's build the UI. We can split the app into a few components. The statistic and headings, where I'll put them inside a header element. And the game area, where we have the input, the button, and the word, where I'll put them inside the main element. So let's start with the header. I'll create an article where I put in the WPM, score, and time left. And I'll give this element an ID of stats. And in here, I'll create a P tag where I put in the WPM and create a span tag for the WPM display and do the same for score and time left. And right after the stats, we put in our heading, H1, an ID of main heading, and set the content. Next, in the main element, we'll create a section with an ID of main section. And this is where we'll put in a remaining game component. So we'll put in an article element and this is where we'll put in all the type words. We also need a button, and this will be the start game button. Next, an article again. This is where we display the word that we want the user to type in. Finally, we we'll create a form, and inside the form, we'll have an input. And this is where we let the user to type in the word they see. All right, now let's try to style our HTML elements. First of all, I would like to change the font. We'll target body and set the font family to something else. Next, let's style our button. We'll give it a background color and make the text white. Change the cursor when we hover on it. Give it some paddings. Increase the font size. Remove the border. Round the edges. Remove the outline and center it by setting the display to block and also setting margin left and right to auto. Next, let's style the input. Give it a little bit of paddings. Increase the font size. Set the display to block so we can center it and increase the width. And finally, margin left and right to auto to center it. We also want to center our main heading. Just set the text align property to center. And for the stats, we also want to center them. So we set margin left and right to auto and width to fit content. That will do the trick. Now I also want to hide the stats and also the text input before we start the game. Let's define a helper class called hide. And it'll simply set a display property to none. So the idea is by default, we'll give the stats and also the input this class. And as soon as I click on start game, we'll remove the hide class from these two elements. All right, time for JavaScript. Again, first thing, we need to write down our story. In other words, our plan before we start coding. So here's the plan. If we click on the start game button, first thing we need to hide the button, show the stats, show the input field, show the word, and also start the timer. When a user enter an input, we need to check if the input is correct. If it is correct, we'll add the word to the result list and it should have a green background. And we also want to add one to the user scope. If the input is not correct, then we'll add a word to the list with a red background. After the user has entered an input, we should clear the field and also show the next word. We also need to constantly update our stats. So for every second, we should calculate the stats and check if the game has ended. When the game ended, we should alert the WPM to the user and also refresh the page. That will do for now. Let's start coding. All right, let's go to our first story, which is what should happen when we click on the start game button. First of all, we need to target the start game button. We can do that by using document, get element by ID, and we'll target button, as that's the only button in our app. Now, in order to let JavaScript to do something when this button's been clicked, we need to add an event listener to this button. So start game button, add event listener on the click event. The second argument will be a callback function that accepts an event parameter, which represents the click event. We should call the prevent default function from the event object, just in case it triggers some default behavior on the browser. Now to hide the button, we can simply add the hide class that we created before to our start game button. So just set the class name to hide. In contrast, if we want to show the stats, which was assigned to the hide class by default, we first store the element as a variable and just set the class name to an empty string to remove the hide class. Let's test this one out. I click on the button, the button disappeared, and the stats appeared. So far, so good. Let's move on. Let's show the input field similar to the stat content by first targeting the input element 
and set the class name to an empty string. Let's try this out again. When I click on the button, the input field is now showing. But we do have a little bit of issue here. The input field is not autofocused at the moment. As the player, I have to click on the input field to start typing, which is a little bit inconvenient. Let's fix that. We can use JavaScript to focus on the input field by calling the focus function on the input element. And now if I click on the button, my cursor is autofocused on the input field, and I'm ready to get started right away. Okay, the next part is to grab a random word and show it on the screen. We first need to prepare the dataset to achieve this. I've copied a chapter of Alice in Wonderland. We use that as the source of our game. Let's create a new file called alice.js and we'll put a source text inside it and assign it to a variable called Alice. And back in index.html, we'll simply load this script before our main script. So now the variable Alice is available on our main script. Now the next step is to be able to grab a random word from Alice. One way to do that is to convert the text into an array of words and make use of the math random function to randomly get an element from that array. Let's do that. First, we need to split Alice. I'm going to declare a new variable called split Alice and just going to call the split function on Alice. We'll split the text by space. Now let's create the function that generates the random word from Alice. I'll call it get random word. And this function will simply return one of the random element in the splitted Alice array. So here's the tricky bit. How do we generate a random index within the acceptable range? In this case, from 0 to the length of splitted Alice minus 1. So let's say there are 5 elements in splitted Alice. The acceptable indices are 0 until 4. Because index starts from 0. And the last element has an index of 4. So how can we make this work? Let's take a look at the math random function. The math random function will generate a number between 0 and 1, but not including 0 and 1 themselves. So if we multiply this range by the length of the array, we'll get a number between 0 and 5. And now we just need to round down the number. So for example, if we get the number 1.5, we'll need to round it down to 1. And if we get 4.7, we need to round it down to 4. To round a number down, we can use the math floor function. So just route the whole expression within the math floor function and we are done. Let's try this function out. We'll console log it. And in the console, every time I refresh the page, I get a different word. So that is working. We're now ready to show a random word in the DOM. Let's create a function for that. I'll call that function next word, which means to show the next random word. So in this function, I'll generate a random word by calling the get random word function. And we want to set this word as a content of the text display article. Let's store the text display element as a variable. That would set the text content property to the random word. Then we'll call this next word function back in the event listener. Let's try this out. When I click on a button, the random word appears. And if I hit refresh and click on a button again, another random word appears. Seems like it's working. However, the random word doesn't seem to be styled. Let's fix that. We'll target text display, set a font size to 3 grand, and also center it by setting the text align property. Now that looks better. Just one more thing before we move on. Every time we run the next word function, the word generated is only stored inside the DOM. I would also like to have a way to keep track of the word generated in JavaScript. The reason is we want to compare what the user type in matches with the word generated. One way of doing this is to create an object and store the random word in it. I'm going to call this object state, which represents the state of our app at any given point of time. So this state object contains all the data when the app is running. So now back in the next word function, all I need to do is to set the current word property in our state object to the word generated. So now whenever we need to know what the current word is, we just need to read it from this state object. All right, moving on, let's build the input logic. To do that, we can attach an event listener to the form element. Once again, we'll store the form element as a variable and we'll add an event listener to it, listening to the submit event. We can get a user input by calling on the value property of the input element. Now we do need to account for the situation where the user did not enter anything. So if the user didn't enter anything, we should do nothing. We can run this logic by having an if statement if user input is equal to an empty string, we'll just stop the function by typing in the return statement. Then we need to check if the user input is equal to the current word. 
To make our code read small like English, we can store the check as a variable. So we'll declare a new variable, is correct, is equal to whether user input is equal to the current word or not. Now let's lay out the if statement. So we type in if is correct, we want to set up the current word with a green background, otherwise a red background. To do that, we need to create an element and add it to the DOM. Why don't we create a function for that? Let's create a function. We'll call it create word span. So this function will simply create a span element with a given background color and a content. So in the function, we'll create an element using the document create element function, and it will be a span element. Now the span element should have a background color matches with the given color argument. So let's define a style variable, which we'll be adding to the span element, set it equal to background color, colon, and concatenate with the color parameters given to the function. Now to set this background color to the span we just created, just call the set attribute function and set a style attribute to our variable here. Next, we'll set the content of the span to the content argument. Finally, we'll return the span element that we created as a result of this function. Now back to the event listener, we need to create a different span with different color based on the situation. So let's declare a blank span variable before the if statement. And if the user input is correct, we need to create a span with green yellow background and the content will be user input. Otherwise, if the input is wrong, we'll create a word span with red background. Again, content will be user input. And after the if statement, we need to append this span element to where it belongs. Let's target the main content. And we'll call the append child function on the main content element and pass in a newly created span element to the function. To clear the user input, we just need to set the value property of the input to an empty string. Showing the next word is easy, we just need to call our next word function. Let's test our code. Click on the button, we type in the correct word, the word is added with green background. If we type in something wrong, we get a red background. Looking good so far, but there's a few issues with the styling. Right now, all the words seems to be cluttered together. Let's fix that. Let's add a helper class to give the type word some padding. I'm going to call it type word and set the padding to 5 pixel. And we'll go to the create word span function and give the span a class of type word. Let's try the game one more time. And now the words are separated with a little bit of padding. There's one more issue though. Right now, the word will not break into a new line. As I add more and more word, They'll just continue off the screen. This is an easy fix. We just need to set the display property of the type word to inline block. Let's test it one more time. And now we're good to go. Now we haven't done anything related to the score yet. Let's create a new property called score in our state and set it to zero by default. And we'll increment the score by one if the user typed in the correct answer. Let's move on. We'll create the timer next. Let's create a function called start clock for that. We need to do something for every second. To do that, we can use the set interval function, which will trigger a callback function at a given interval in millisecond. In our case here, it will be a thousand, since we want to run this function every second. We should set up a time limit for the game. So for every running second, we should have a counter that keeps tracks on how many seconds have passed. Let's do that. We'll add a new property to our state object called time elapse and another property called game length. And now back in our clock function, we'll increment the time elapsed by one for every running second. Next, let's create a new function to calculate the stats or to show the stats on the DOM. I'll call this function render stats. So the three metrics are the time remaining, the score and the WPM. Let's go through them one by one. First of all, let's store the corresponding elements as variables, just like the other elements. For the time remaining, we'll set the text content to be the game length minus time elapse. The score will be straightforward as well. We'll simply grab the value from state.score. WPM is a little bit more tricky. So basically, we need to calculate the numbers of correct words entered per minute. So it will be the score divided by the minute elapsed. So we need to convert time elapse, which is in seconds, to minute by dividing it by 60. That will do for the render stats function, and we'll call it in our clock function. Moving on, the game will end 
when the time elapsed is equal to the game length. So we'll create an if statement here. If time elapsed is equal to game length, we will alert the user on the WPM and we can grab the WPM directly from the element. Once that is done, to refresh the page, we can call the Windows Location Reload helper function and that will do the job. All right, now let's test our code. We'll need to run our start clock function in the start game button event listener. Let's click on the start game button, type in a few words. Oh no, there's something funny with the stats. First of all, the stats are not calculated instantly as soon as I type in the words. But that's okay, we can easily fix this by calling the render stats function in our input event listener. The second thing is, our WPM is a little bit funny. We need to restrict the number of decimal points. That's an easy fix as well. We just need to call the toFix function on the WPM calculation. The toFix function will round a number up into however many decimal points that you want. One thing to note here is that you'll also convert your number into a string. All right, let's try it one more time. The score is now instant and the WPM is now in two decimal points. Everything looks good. And when the time expires, we get an alert message. And if we click on OK, the page will refresh and we get back to the initial page. And that is pretty much it. There is quite a bit of content to cover in this lesson. If there's anything that doesn't make sense, feel free to rewatch the video. And if you like for a challenge, try to recreate this game from scratch without referencing my code. And post a GitHub repo in the comments below and see if you can improve this game. That's it for now, and I'll see you again in the next video. If you enjoyed the content of this video, don't forget to hit the like, subscribe, and the bell icon for more content to come. It will really help me out. Thanks for your support.